Hey Ben, good job on your video last week. Thank we really you. enjoyed it. But today, since it's a beautiful day outside, we have a better scavenger hunt for you. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Let's All do right. this. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, guys. So, um, on this scavenger hunt, we are on part two. So, um, right now we're is we're at the basketball courts. So as you can see, we're facing basketball courts. So we're already at our first clue of part two. All right, so follow me. Let's look. Oh, look at that. Clue number three. Ugh. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we are going to go by the swings. So follow me. I don't know if you guys ever watched. I used to watch a show called Subumafu. And the two guys would always find clues and they'd always go into these little little uh, little bushes and they would always find um, clues of what they were trying to find. And, and then there's an and then there's another show that I used to watch with blues clues. Little dog, little little dog he used to show the clue and then the guy would read it what the clue was so. all right so now we are by the swings well, that's our next clue Inside here. there it is clue number one okay okay we're going next ben we are going to go next to the logs right there all right very important okay Okay. Hey, there we go. Clue number five. Okay. So, we started at the basketball courts. Then, we went to the swings. Then, we went to the logs. Now, we go across the bridge. And now, our next clue is going to be at the slide. Let's go. Okay. Clue number six. All right, we got it. Okay, now we're gonna go to the washrooms. In the washrooms? Or? No. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Our next clue. Then we enter in the parking lot. Right there. All right. Now we got all our clues. Now we gotta open them. Where do you wanna go, Ben? Where should we open them? Um, hey, Ben, I got a good idea. Let's go to my car. And maybe next week we'll have to take my car to go to the next, the next clue. All right, let's do it. So, put all the, all the clues out. I know we have every one of them. Okay, so now they're in order. So we'll start with clue number one. So we got a U, we got an N. We got an M, and we got an I, we got an O. Can you guys give me a hint? What do you think? Should we give him the first letter? Yeah. It starts with M. M. Ooh. Oh. I know. Minaru. Yes! yes. So All right. Next week, Ben, we will be taking my car to Minaru to do awesome. our next scavenger. We're going to Minaru next week. Let's go. All right, we'll see you guys there. Okay guys, we have John here and we have Susan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a dance battle with these guys. What they're gonna do is they're gonna do their coolest dance moves and the other one has to copy. Whoever cannot copy 
we'll lose. Are you guys ready? Uh, yes! Yeah, let's do this! There okay. we go. Okay, ready? Let's do the Who's first. You, let's go, John. Okay. Ooh, got some crazy footwork there. That's pretty cool. Okay, Susan, are you ready? Yeah. Do you think you can do this? I think so. Oh, you're wearing heels. So. I know. <laughs> Guys, I think she can do this. Okay. Heels aside, I think she can do this. Ready? Give her a cheer at home. Ready? Go! Ah, there we go. You're doing good. What do you think, John? Is she doing it? I did. Well, I That's okay. We'll give it to her. We'll give it to her. Okay. Okay, Susan. Now it's your turn to make a move for John. Okay. What's your What's your dance move? Oh, the yeah. what is that called? The the, the wave. wave. I was gonna say I the don't worm. Know how to do it. Try it. Oh yeah, yeah, just make it really loose, John. Really loose. Just be loose. Oh, you're getting it, you're getting oh, it. Yeah. Okay, let's see it from Susan one more time. Oh, Susan, that's pretty How cool. Who knew Susan could do this? I did not know. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't this know. This one that. I'm gonna make it really hard for you. Okay, okay, ready? Okay, John, we're ready. We're ready. One is all the Fortnite. Oh no, he's gonna give you a Fortnite dance. Are you ready? Are you ready for this Fortnite dance? Okay, ready, go. Oh, he's doing it, he's doing the floss. Oh, he's doing whatever that is. I don't know, that's a dab. What's the, that's the Fortnite dance. Susan, you got the big it. shoes to fill. I'm glad I'm not doing this. John, you're an excellent dancer, I'm impressed. Okay, Susan, what do you think? Are you ready? I don't know if I can do all of that, but I'll try the first one. Okay, yeah, we'll try it, we'll try it. The floss, ready? Whoa, yes, you're flossing! Not your teeth, you're flossing the dance move. You're doing even cooler, except flossing your teeth is really cool, guys, floss your teeth. And then he dabbed. Then he dabbed. Wait, you did, did one more thing. One. Like, <clears throat> oh yeah, you did. Oh, that's pretty cool. Everybody go. Oh. Do you have any more moves? Oh, that's uh, it. oh no. Wait, your turn? Oh, my turn. Okay. Um, okay. What's your dance move? Guys, if you have any dance moves that you would like for to suggest for these guys to do, put it in the comments below or DM us on Instagram and let's give these guys some cool dance moves to do. Yeah. Maybe if you guys have some really cool dance moves, you can tell us and we'll see if they can do it. If they can okay. do your dance moves, we'll this see who is their better. This one is what I'm going to do. I know, I got a preview. You. This is one of the dance moves he has for you. I'm Ready? Just, it's not a dance. I'm just gonna do a cartwheel. Oh, are you gonna do a cartwheel? Whoa! <laughs> John, that's pretty cool. Kids, don't try this at home. Okay, guys, this is a message from me, John Nathan. I just wanted to say, it's not about winning or losing. It's joy or failure, and one thing. Don't just rub it in on yourself if you do something wrong. Just try again next time. Just did it. That's how I learned how to do like cartwheels with one hand and stuff like that. And do karate. I wouldn't be able to do that. So this is a message from you, from your friendly neighborhood friend at RPC. This is so fun. You should totally join RPC. It's the best place ever. If you want to do what I'm doing, Contact Pastor Crystal, and you might see me, might not, but it's a lot of fun. Peace out. Preteen Zoom call is today at 5 to 6 p.m. If you need more information, please contact Caitlin at family at rpcchurch.ca. April 4th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., we'll be having a drive through so mark that on your calendar. We're, we have gifts for you and your family. We are looking for some help for Easter and spring break. Please contact Pastor Crystal at crystal at rpcchurch.ca. Parents, we need more information about your kids. There's a form in the description. Please fill that out and send it to family at rpcchurch.ca. Today's story is about Samson and Delilah. The story of Samson begins because the Israelites were once again getting into trouble with God. Even after God saved them from the Egyptians, helped them through the Red Sea, and miraculously sent manna from the sky to feed them, they still complained. 
So when they started misbehaving again, God decided something had to be done. So to punish the Israelites, he put the Philistines in charge of them for 40 years. This is where Samson comes in. He would help free the Israelites from the Philistines, except Samson's mom actually couldn't have any baby. But an angel of the Lord came to her and said, you won't have any children right now, but God is going to give you a son. Make sure you don't drink any wine or eat any animal considered to be unclean. You will have a special son. He should never cut his hair, eat grapes or raisins, drink wine or touch a dead body. And most importantly, his purpose will be to save the Israelites from the Philistines. This special boy was named Samson. As he grew, he realized that he had a special gift. He was incredibly strong. As Samson got older, he was able to kill a lion with his bare hands and defend himself against 1,000 Philistines. I guess you can say that Samson didn't like the Philistines, and the Philistines didn't like Samson either. They were constantly trying to figure what the secret was behind Samson's strength. If they could figure that out, then they would get rid of him. As Samson became a young man, he started to like girls. There was one girl he specially liked, and her name was Delilah. The rulers of Philistine noticed that Samson would come to see Delilah every day. So they decided to go to Delilah and make a deal with her. Delilah was just on her way from a walk one day, thinking about the next time she would see Samson, when some of the rulers of the Philistines approached her. One of the men asked her, uh, Delilah, we were wondering if you could find out what makes Samson so strong. We are so curious. If you find out, we would like to give you 5,500 pieces of silver. That was about $5,000, which was a ton of money in those days. So Delilah went home and started to think about how she could get the secret out of Sam's. She thought maybe she could make his favorite dinner for him and just ask him. After all, he did love her. Maybe this would might be easier than she thought. So Delilah got busy making a nice meal and waited for Samson to arrive. As they sat down to eat, Delilah asked how Samson's day was and after a few minutes she asked him, Samson, could you please tell me the secret of your great strength? I guess I'm just curious and want to know how your enemies can tie you up and how you can get out so easily. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me up with seven brand new bowstrings that have not been tried, I'll become as weak as any other man. So later that night after supper, Delilah made an excuse to go for a walk and met up with some of the rulers of the Philistine and told them what Samson had said. They immediately went out and found seven bowstrings to give to Delilah and told her, we want you to tie Samson up when he's asleep. Let us into your house when the coast is clear and when you wake him up, we want you to be there to capture him. So Delilah did what the men asked her to do. It was a little tricky because it took Samson a while to fall asleep. But once he was snoring, she started to tie him up. When she was done, the men came in and hid all around. And when they were ready, Delilah shouted, Samson, the Philistines are here. But without any difficulty at all, Samson snapped the strings like there was never anything around his hands. Well, Delilah felt a little bit silly and was a little hurt that Samson wouldn't tell her the secret of his strength. She started to think that the Philistines would think that she could find out the secret and then they wouldn't get any money. 
So Delilah put on her sad face and she looked up at Samson and said, You made a fool out of me, Samson. You lied to me. Seriously, now, tell me, how can you be tied? Samson said to her, If anyone ties me with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah again did what she did before and tied him up with the new rope. She shouted again, Samson, the Philistines are here. But again, without any difficulty, Samson once again snapped out of the ropes like there was never anything around his hands. Delilah was getting angry, but she didn't want Samson to notice. She had to make Samson think that she was sad, that he lied to her. So she put on her saddest face and said to him, Oh, Samson, how could you lie to me again? Please tell me now how you can be tied. Even though Delilah seemed sad, Samson told her another lie. And Delilah was once again made a fool of. Delilah finally said to Samson, how can you tell me you love me when you don't trust me with your thoughts and secrets? But Samson just decided to ignore her the best he could. The only problem was that Delilah wouldn't stop asking. She asked in the morning during breakfast, when they were out for a walk, at lunch, at supper, before bed. She asked all day long and Samson just couldn't take it anymore. Finally, Samson said, enough already. I will tell you everything. Just leave me alone. My hair has never been cut. I had to take certain vows when I was born and have been given this gift by God. If my head was shaved, I would become as weak as any other man. Delilah could tell that this was the truth this time. So she asked the Philistines to give her one more chance. They came as they had it all of the time. This time they brought Delilah's money along with them. Samson fell asleep on Delilah's lap. So she got someone else to shave off his hair. As they were shaving it off, Samson's body began to get weaker. When it was completed, Delilah called out, Samson, the Philistines are coming. As he woke, he wasn't aware that his gift from God left him and the Philistines grabbed him. This time, Samson could do nothing to fight them. The Philistines had captured Samson, but his hair began to grow again. God still had plans for him. In the end, Samson regained his strength before they could kill him. They tied him up to two large pillars that held a large temple up, and he was able to break free. But when he did, the temple fell on him and a large number of Philistines. This was how God freed the Israelites from the Philistines. Samson ended up breaking all of his vows. He didn't seem to take God's rule for him seriously. God still used Samson to defeat the Philistines, but he couldn't do have done so much more if he had obeyed. God made each of us for a reason too. He made each of you exactly how he wanted. And remember, God doesn't make mistakes. You have the family you do, because that's what God wants you to be. You live where you do because that's where God put you. Your life might not be perfect, but he wants you to learn and grow with what you have. Good friends encourage us to be good, but bad friends pressure us to do bad things.
well do you know your Bible characters? I'm gonna read out a couple of riddles and see if you can figure out who I am talking about. And I'll give you a Bible verse to read if you are a little bit stumped. All right, let's start with the first one. I built an ark to save my family and friends from the flood. Who could that be? If you're stuck, pull out your Bibles and turn to Genesis 6 verses 7 through 9 and pause the video right here. That's right, we're talking about Noah. All right, number two, I wrote many letters that would become part of the New Testament. Hmm, these would be letters like 1st and 2nd Corinthians and Ephesians and Romans. Who could we be talking about? We're talking about Paul. Number three, God promised me that my family would be as numerous as the stars. Huh. A forefather. Hmm. He's from Genesis 15, verses 5 and 6. We're thinking about Abraham. Number four. I was the first woman to judge and lead Israel. Her story is in Judges 4, verse 4. We're talking about Deborah. Number 5. I helped Moses as he led the people out of Egypt. Hmm. If you're stuck, then turn to Exodus 4, verse 14. We're thinking about Aaron. Numero 6. I persuaded Samson to tell me the secret of his strength. Hmm. This person's story is in Judges chapter 16. If you're thinking about Delilah, you are correct. Number seven. I led an army of 300 men against the Midianites and defeated them. This story is in Judges 7, verses 7 through 8. I refused to let the Israelites go until my firstborn son was killed. Hmm, wow. Hmm. You can find this story in Exodus 11, verses 1 through 5. We are thinking about Pharaoh. How many did you get right? Let us know. you see these two different pieces of strength? Can you spot the difference between them? Which one do you think is stronger? Well, it may be hard to see, but one of the strings actually has glue on it. And because of the glue, it makes it stick stronger to things. Just like gravity, the wind, and vibrations, some things can be hard to see but that doesn't make it any less stronger than it is. God's Holy Spirit cannot be seen, but the Bible says that He is with Jesus, His followers, and that strengthens them. In Ephesians 3, 16-17, it says, I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts, as you trust in Him, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Over and over in the Bible, God tells us He will be with us so we do not have to fear or be afraid. When we use glue or feel the wind or think about gravity, let it remind us that His Holy Spirit is with us to strengthen us and we are not alone. We may not be able to see Him, but we can see His power and feel His presence with us. Number one is strength. So from the story that we just learned from Samson and Delilah, we learned that Delilah wanted to know what gave Samson his strength. And she kept on persuading him so she would be able to know. And he ended up telling her in the end. And when he did, he lost his strength. So 
while he was begging and begging God to be able to give him his strength, he said this in Judges 16, verse 28. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. O oh God, please strengthen me one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. So, boys and girls, we know that strength is something that God has given us. Just like God gave Samson his strength, he had to pray to God again. So when he did, God was merciful to him and gave him back his strength, and he was able to take the Philistines down, and he also died in the end. But he knows that God was really, really merciful for him when he did. So when we are going through stuff, we always have to ask God to be our strength, and He will give it to us when we ask and pray. Point number two, and we're talking about sin. As much as we want to be independent and do things on our own, we know that God has a plan for each and every one of us. And when we go away from that plan or when we don't meet what God wants us to, that's called sin. It's missing the mark of what God wants for us. So thinking about that story of Samson and Delilah, God had an amazing plan for Samson and all he had to do was not cut his hair or not eat unclean food. But what did he do? He befriended Delilah. And because he wanted to be liked by her, he told her the secret to his super strength. He missed the mark of what God wanted him to be. And as a result, they captured him and he lost his super strength. Let's never forget about how much God loves us. That is the truth. But what also is the truth is that God wants us to succeed. And the only way we can do that is if we listen to Him. That if we love Him and we go back to Him every single time, then we can realize the plans that He has for us. Hey guys, so for point number three today, we are going to teach you a really cool big word. You guys can learn how to spell it, how to say it, and even what it means and you can impress all your parents. Okay, you guys ready? So the word is sovereign. And so basically sovereign means that the like whoever it is has supreme power or they have all the authority. And in our lives, we know that God is sovereign. God has all the power and authority over everything. And that helps us feel better because when things are tough, when things go wrong, we know that because of God's sovereignty, because of all the power he has, he's able to conquer it in our lives if we give it to him. And just like that in the story of Samson and Delilah, Samson like was captured by the Philistines. And Samson, you know, he probably didn't know how he's gonna get through it, how he was gonna help defeat the Philistines. But he prayed to God and he knew because if he prays to God, God would help him. And so God being the forgiving, the merciful God that he is, he granted Samson's wish and he gave Samson his ability back one last time to be able to destroy the, the Philistines. And because of, because of God's sovereignty, he was able to do this. Samson was able to do this. And just like in that story, um, God is sovereign. So with whatever the problems you guys have in your lives, whatever you think it may be too, it's too big. Just know that God is sovereign. He has all the power. He has all the authority. The problem is not too big. God is bigger than all your problems. Go grab your parents and answer these questions with us. Number one, what separates all people from God? Number two, what is sin? Number three, how did the Philistines figure out Sam's own riddle? Where did Sam's own strength come from?
Number six, why is it important for believers to confess and repent from sin? So I was just at home and I started thinking to myself about how God created me. So I thought of a cute craft that we can do together. And this is something that I was able to do for myself. And this is something you guys can do as well at home. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to grab a piece of paper and on top, you're going to write God's recipe for me. And you have the ingredients and you just put your name on top, just like I did. So they're basically, the ingredients are going to be traits about what and how God has created you to be. So it could be your strengths, it could be things that you like to do, or things that you know you're good at. So I'm going to write some of the things about myself that I know. It could also be things that you're talented in, or some things that you really, really enjoy about yourself. So... My ingredients I'm going to write down is I'm really optimistic. And you can just keep going on like that until you finish up your list. So boys and girls, if you do not want to fall victim to pride, we need to begin by remembering who made us. God gave us our gift, just as he gave Samson his strength. Every good thing that we have come not from our own goodness, but it comes from God. We came into the world with nothing, boys and girls, and we will leave with nothing. Anything we enjoy for the, in the meantime come from God. Secondly, boys and girls, we need to thank God for all he's given us. We need to give him the glory for our success and our triumphs. We do not need to take credit for the things God has done for you. Be thankful and let others know that it is God who gave the blessings. Remember who made you, boys and girls. Remember where your blessing came from and give all the glory to God. Be humble and don't let pride make you stumble. So boys and girls, this morning we want to give you an opportunity to say a simple prayer. To ask God to forgive us for any pride or any thoughts that we have that's not from God. Are you ready? So let's pray. Dear God, forgive us for our pride and thinking we can make it on our own. Teach us to be humble and always submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, I'm here at the gym already. I hope to see you next week. Have a blessed week and see you guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope, you, I hope to see you next week. Bye.